Let's get one of the endings now by not, you know, diving into the weird black void thing. Um, though I wonder, actually, I wonder. Are we get the ending I'm thinking of, or are we accidentally getting the other ending? Let's just see. Because I know I made some choices before when I initially uh, died, right in the bad end, because I didn't get enough points of Ren. So I feel dizzy. I can't brace myself anymore. I'll die. I can't endure it at the very end. Should I loosen up since I get I can't brace myself? If I do so, I should be able to push him back into the void. I gather my courage. Will my arm rip off first? Will his chain rip off first? Or will he come out first? I mean... You know, instead of us jumping into the void, we could just, you know, cut off our arm. That's a thing we could do. We lose an arm, but it'll work out, maybe. I don't care either way. I'll fight to the very end and die gallantly. <laughs> I turn around instantly. I look back at the compound which has turned into a flat field. At the same time, something passes by me. Headshot. The chain is released. Looking like he saw something unexpected, Gilgamesh lets go of the chain. I fall on my butt. I sit there dumbfounded, and the voice shrinks and disappears in front of me. I can't stand up and just look behind me to the flat field. Dawn is near. The one with the rising sun behind him is the knight in red. I complain without thinking, but I'm smiling happily for some reason. <laughs> I have nothing to say to him. I guess I'll stay quiet so I can sleep. A golden field is that is that is now deserted. Seeing the knight standing there and Tosaka running to him, I lay on the ground. Tosaka should say everything I want to say to him. So I'll sleep for now. We'll end up fighting if we see each other again, and I'm not used to parting with myself. And for the final time, I engrave my ideal into my mind so that I won't forget it and close my eyes. So yeah. Archer was alive this whole time! Hmm. The land below him is like a wasteland he once walked on. There's nothing here. There's nothing, as everything was blown away from the mountaintop. The battle has ended. The battle for the Holy Grail has ended, and the curtain is about to fall on his battle as well. He does not know how long it was, but the accumulated wish that should have bound him forever isn't gone now. The end quickly permeates into him and takes away his body's form. He looks towards the voice. She should not have the energy to run, but she is running with racket breathing. He watches it in silence. <laughs> the girl that ran up to him looks up at night. The red cloak fluttering in the wind shows no trace of what it used to be. The cloak is cut everywhere, and his armor is cracked and torn. His existence is weak. Standing there haughtily, the knight begins to disappear from his feet up. The rising sun is in the distance. The golden light is emerging from the horizon.
He must not have anything special to say. The knight in red says trivial things. That gets to her all the more. The knight who is about to disappear is still acting like before. He is her partner that she spoke cynically with, ran through the battles with, and trusted her back to. She can declare that those days were fun. And it's still there before her eyes. He has remained in this world to save her at the last moment. He lost his master and received the King of Heroes noble phantasms. His body was disappearing, but he did not come to her and ask for her help. He instead watched over this battle. And the end is in front of her. The girl cannot think of what to say. It is always like this for her at the most crucial times. She loses her cleverness when it counts the most. The knight smiles a bit. He knew that from the start. The clumsiness of the girl is a dear memory for the knight. She looks up at the knight. He smiles while he talks. She gets a lump in her throat after seeing his regret free face. The instant she wonders if he should really disappear. I mean, I guess that's a possibility. He says something she shouldn't. His reply is free of doubt and his will is strong. His face is as bright as the rising sun, and how can she force him when he's making a face like that? Won't be saved. The girl swallows her words and hangs her head. Well, yeah, when you think about it, when he disappears, he's just gonna go back to the throne of heroes and he's just going to repeat what he's been doing all this time, again and again. That is not something the girl should say. It's not something that's solved by keeping the knight in this world. It's troubling to have her cry. For him, the girl always has to be a, a positive, indulgent realist. He was always encouraged by her figure. So he wants her to stay that way until the very end. The girl looks up at the voice. Her face looks cute. <laughs> looks cute. It's out of nowhere. Kawaii! Trying to hold back the tears. Rather than expressing the attachment he feels, he looks at the boy lying in the distance. Yeah, well, yeah. Take, please take care of me, as in the, the past me, not this me. The knight says so as if it's somebody else's business. Those are words of parting. The future might change. If a girl like her stays with Emiya Shiro, the hero Emiya should not be born. His words contain such hope. But even if it ends up that way, the already existing knight will forever be a guardian. Yeah, like even in this timeline I guess, even if Shiro doesn't end up like Archer, uh, this, like, I guess, variation of Archer will always exist as a guardian, I think is the, is the point. Even if you create a paradox, it's not really a paradox because uh, he's from technically a different timeline. I assume. The boy and the man are two different existences. They only have the same starting point, and he is an ideal that the boy dreamed of. There is no salvation available for this knight. There is nothing to give to him, as he has already died and become a phenomenon. She nods in spite of that. She cannot give him anything, 
so she will give him her best smile. He asks her to take care of him. She smiles so that she can answer the trust he put in her. Forgive yourself. She, she does not put it into words. She looks up at the disappearing night with a flood of emotions. How much salvation did it bring? After engraving the girl's smile into his memory with pride. Oh, look at that. It's, it's basically Shiro's, like, normal face. A breeze. The knight has finally arrested his wounded body without waiting for the girl's reply. And you know, when you think about it, this guy parallels, uh, kind of like there's a bit of a parallel with the uh, Fae route actually. You know how Saber disappeared, you know, in the sunset? Well, she, like, uh, well, um, they had their final goodbyes with Shiro, like a servant and master having their final goodbyes. It's like this as well, but, but with uh, Archer and Rin, in a way. She wipes away her tears and talks to the one who is not there. Her voice is clear, and the girl is standing firm again. It is only natural. She does not have time to be depressed after he made a face like that. He says goodbye to the ground that the knight was standing on, and runs to the boy laying on the ground. Within the golden sunrise, the smile he had was like that of the boy. Epilogue time. I sometimes recall the fight. The crying spirit and the sparse flying off the clashing swords. My attacks were immature, and it's not something one could call a sword dance. We were both clumsy and did not know of retreat. The ridiculous sounds of clashing swords were annoying and I have no memory of them. At that time, I lost an answer and found an answer. So a plus and a minus makes a zero. Nothing has changed. He's him and I'm me. I'm just watching this fading dream. It's been only a month, but it feels so dear now. It seems like it happened so long ago. The memory of it fading day by day and I can't even remember what the person I was fighting looked like. But that's to be expected. That was something that was impossible from the start. We did not believe that the fight would change anything. We just tried to beat each other to ascertain ourselves. So there's nothing to gain from victory. There, never any, there was never any such thing. The loser comes to an end, and there's no prize for the winner. Man, it really was for good for nothing. But I can still recall it if I close my eyes. The echoes of unrefined metals. The dazzling distant technique that knew no retreat. It was our beliefs that crashed against each other. I fought against my own ideal to carry out my hope. But the result is not clear yet. I don't know who won or which of us remained. It should be a while before the result becomes clear. An illusion like a mirage that disappears when one turns around. Only the reverberation remains, and my feet will eventually reach. Alright, back to normal school days. Actually, I was wondering, who's, who said all that anyway? I sometimes recall the fight. I thought I thought it was Shiro at the time. I think it's Shiro that says that. Or is it the other Shiro? I don't know. Because it, it looked like the... 
text was smaller or was or was I just seeing things? Hmm. I mean, I think that was Shiro actually. That was uh, Shiro's monologue because otherwise why would he say a month has passed, right? Anyway. Uh, my body's shaking. The voice brings me back to reality. It's Ishei. I raise my head and look at my classmate. I don't know if he's in a hurry or just plain angry, but Issei yells at me. We're the only ones in the classroom. It's 9.50. The closing ceremony starts at 10 o'clock, so I bet everyone's at the gym already. Our true best friend that kind of murdered us that, that one time, but it, well, it was because he was under some sort of magic curse, so it's fine. Hmm? うん。わかれば he sounds scary, but the frightening truth is that is that is very possible. The extra homework she gave us last summer after we got her mad was ridiculous. It wasn't even English homework. What was she even thinking when she told us to enter any competition to win a medal? <laughs> that was the homework. We should hurry to the gym for now. It only takes us three minutes if we run, and we should make it five minutes early if no teacher finds us. You gotta follow the rules. I was too optimistic. As expected from the student council president, he really is committed, as he's still following the rules even now. Simply speed walk. I nod and walk faster. We are in the middle of March and the sky is amazingly blue. Fuyuki City has long winters, but spring is finally around the corner. Days went, uh, went by quickly. It's been a month since the Holy Grail War. The city is back to normal now. The Holy Grail has been destroyed, and most of the damage caused by the Masters was taken care of by the church. Hmm. Yeah, I was wondering, like, yeah, usually the church fixes everything, but Kotomini is dead. However, the person that came as, uh, came as a replacement for Kotomine is old, but energetic, and everything was smoothly settled. Okay. Someone took his place, someone else, who's hopefully not a super evil priest as well. <laughs> I don't know. But one can see the after effects of battle here and there. Kuzuki Soichiro, the person that chose to fight as a master, is considered missing. Well, we know he's dead. Issei was sad that the one who he treated as his older brother was gone, but... <laughs> Issei just laughed it off. The surprising thing is Fujine, and it turned out that they often drank tea together. She complained that she wanted to fight him once, so it seems Fujine knew that Kuzuki was a master of martial arts. Hmm. Jinji's life has been saved thanks to Tosaka, goddammit, and he's currently in the hospital. I hope he dies in the hospital. Anyway, I guess the hospital is part of the magic association, and he's getting better. Sakura is busy visiting Shinji, so she's been, uh, she's been showing up at, at my place only on the weekends. I went to check up on them once, and they were getting along surprisingly well. 
Hopefully Shinji's not punching Sh Chakra again when he gets better. Hmm. I don't know if that vest took something out of him or he's just an unenergetic from the wounds. Either way, Shinji is ironic but honest. He's acting more like the Shinji I first got to know. Hmm. Saber's not here anymore. She left this world after destroying the Holy Grail. Yeah. Something constraining her must have been released when she destroyed the Holy Grail with her own hands. It's vexing that I cannot say goodbye to her, but I should be glad that she's freed from the binding of the Holy Grail. Is she? I don't know. I don't know, but I don't know what the actual, like, rules are for her. She made a contract and everything, and was summoned to as, as a servant, even though she was still technically alive, until she got the Holy Grail, but then she destroyed it, like, twice. So, what's going on with her? I have no idea. But I guess she will say, like, maybe she's been freed? Like, maybe she's actually had a final death, maybe? If... If I ever do see her again, I want to thank her as much as I can. So... And finally, the most important person... Issei, no, or rather Tosaka, <laughs> right after we get down to the first floor. We meet up with the person representing the students at the closing ceremony, who is coming out of the teacher's office. <laughs> こちらもその言い回しには飽き飽きだ。たまには違うお息子を立ててみろ。それとも貴様、よもやわざと繰り返しているのではあるまいな。異性グレアザトスカ。え、そんなの当たり前じゃない。何？今まで気づいてなかった
弱みといえば弱みは握られてるやはりそうかそう己遠さかもはや捨ておけんさあ相談しろエミア今すぐ白状しろエミア二人で手を合わせて今日こそあのメギツネに仏伐を下してやるのだ He say shakes me. The student council president keeps shaking me. He says normally calm, but his personality changes when it involves Tosaka. Tosaka must be his natural enemy, but. しきが上がっているところすまないが俺じゃ父さかをどうにもできないやっつけに行ったら逆にやっつけられるそのまあ悪いことは言わないからあいつには近づかない方がいいエミアにしては後ろ向きなはずけまさかそれほどの弱みを
They sure are energetic, running like that when spring break starts tomorrow. Then, Tosuka suddenly asks me a strange question. Yeah. Telling me to forget about it, Tosuka continues to drink the orange juice. I'll forget about it if she wants me to. When she calls me Emiya kun, half the time she's going to make a sarcastic remark, and the other half she's going to say something really important. I'm sure in this case, it's the latter. After a month of studying magic under her, I'm finally starting to recognize her habits. Yeah, well, just like in the Fate Route, she's our sensei now. Magic teacher. Yes, because nothing much of note will happen. <laughs> or will happen, usually in the story. Because usually when there's conflict, that's what the, the story is focused on. When there's nothing much going on, then it's kind of like, it's not much to write about in that case. It's been a month since Tosuka started teaching me the basics of magic. I guess uh, that's like in a, in a meta way anyway, that's what I'm referring to. I've been busy with hard work and Tosuka's malicious nature, but she's, uh, she's right now that I think about it. This past month sure went by quickly. So I'm, I'm sure a year will pass in a flash. It would turn into like a slice of life anime. そうね。この教室は教科切りの教室で、4月になったら新しい教室になる。それと同じで、1年後には違う場所に行くことになるんでしょうね。Tosuka holds her knees and looks down from the window. 違う場所か。Will I what will I be doing a year from now when I graduate? No. I don't even need to think about it. There's only one thing I must do. I need to make my ideal come true, just like he did. And well, there's one other big goal right now, but I don't want to think about it since it's irritating. Buying a big diamond ring for your for your waifu in front of you? This. My other goal is to make her admit defeat. Be別にいいだろう。とにかく俺の急務は一人前になることでそのために当社に弟子入りしたんだ。あと一年よろしく頼む。ほら、随分と強気ね。あと 1 エミヤ君の目標が一人前になることと同じで、私のしたいこともあなたを早く一人前にすることだもの。頭の中じゃちゃんと計画立ってるわよ。なんなら紙にして渡そっか。It's a なら卒業した後もずっとこの町にいるってことよね。そうだけど、そういう当社かはどうするんだよ。当社かの家は冬木の管理人なんだろう。当社かだってこの町から離れられないんじゃないのか。私私は卒業したらロンドンに行くけど
ロンドンって魔術協会の総本山のあのロンドン Like Harry Potter style? ええ。冬季の街じゃ限界があるし、5年ぐらいは時計塔で勉強しようかなって。父さんもそうだったって言うし、魔術師として一人前になりたいなら、最高学部に行くのは当然じゃない I guess getting that post-secondary education, that post-secondary magical education. I'm stunned. It's so sudden that my head blanks out. It's natural for Tosaka, who's a legitimate magus. I finally realized the difference in our positions. London. That's a big thing. Oh, that's a big thing. 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 She speaks casually, but I'm sure it's an amazing thing. But London, huh? That's certainly too far away. My father wasn't in the Magic Association. I'm just like him, and I don't like formal stuff. But I might be able to move there. I can start working more, study English, save up traveling and living expenses, and find a job over there. Emiya Kun, you thought the Kyokai was a texture, but I don't know if you can do it. Okay, so I'm going to go to the store. I'm going to go to the store. I'm going to go to the Yeah, technically, I mean, well, I don't know. It was Kurosugu that was like a rogue of the Magic Association, right? So if anyone knew about him, they would try to murder him, I think. That's what he said. And someone would probably try to murder Shiro, but. I don't know, maybe from recommendation from Rin, that wouldn't be the case. Ah, but this is not a good test, so it's not a good test. It's not a good test, but it's not a good test. It's a good test, but it's not a good test. No, 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 no. Let's say I'm able to rent an apartment there. I don't know what kind of a place the clock tower is, but I'm sure Tosca will get even busier. Then, it should be better for me to go there after I become a proper magus by myself. Yeah, that sounds good. Now it's funny, it's good, you know, Rin is saying all this, and Shiro is in his own head thinking about other things. First of all, London isn't suited for me. I bet I'll fade if I go there. And it's, if it's filled with people like Kotomine, <laughs> it's like, is it? You just imagine that everybody in London is just Kotomine? Everybody exactly the same? Everybody's Yorokobe. <laughs> なんか言ってたのか、トサカ。トサカ frowns and shuts her mouth. So, after taking a deep breath, she makes a serious face and. 言い忘れてたんだけど、私はトサカの後継者として招かれてるの。つまり、一人前の魔術師としてちゃんとした一人部屋をもらえるってこと。She says something strange. だから。一人前の魔術師として認められているのそうなると弟子の一人や二人はいて当然でしょほら向こうじゃ派閥争いもあるって言うし一人ぐらいは弟子を連れて行ってもいいんだってトスカスニクスピーカーミーえっとそれは I may be blunt but I know what トスカス trying to say in the word そうよ世話係としてなら、身内一人ぐらいは無条件で連れて行けるみたい。それなら、試験を受けることもないし、学費も何もかも免除になるわ。That's the biggest thing, not paying tuition fees. まあ、扱いは教会の学徒だけど、教会には属さないっていう、そんな役回りになっちゃうんだけど。My head resumes his thinking. No, I force it to start working again. What Tosaka is telling me, I put every cell in my brain to work to weigh the options I have. I must look funny as Tosaka is giggling. She looks kindly at me, and some very happy music starts playing. 
Then Tosaka makes a mischievous expression. CG! She asks me gently, with eyes that see through me. My face turns red. Her words and expression blow away my humility and my dislike of the magic association. This is what I mean by Tosuka holding my weakness, by being a very cute waifu. I can't help it if I fell in love with her. She keeps smiling mischievously. She knows what my answer is, but she is mercilessly attacking me. To be honest, London is too far away, but I can't imagine myself being taught by anyone other than Tosaka. And I never even thought about parting with her. Most of all, I want to be with Tosaka. How the tables have turned, Shiro has become the tsundere. Baka 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 baka. I don't know what will happen to me if I keep staring at her, so I look away. I still feel Tosuka's presence. She's happily watching my reaction. She murmurs gently. She's got me beat. Is it this hard to nod and reply honestly? But I can't turn around unless I say it to her. I meet Tosaka's gaze and tell her my honest opinion. Her smile broadens at those words. あなたが一人前になるまで遠慮なく鍛えてあげるから覚悟なさい。そう、しこさ。言っとくけど、本気にしたぞ。こうなったら一人前になるまでちゃんと面倒見てもらうからな。もちろん。シロを真人間にして思
And Ilya mentioned it in one of the Tiger Dojos, that's basically what you do. But we'll see, I don't know, I don't know. Again, I wish... I kind of wish there was like an actual like visible bar, you know, that just tells you like this is how many points you have with each character, you know, but I guess they kind of keep it invisible because I don't know, like video games in general, visual novels in general kind of keep it invisible for the most part because they don't want they don't want to make it too like artificial, you know, even though it kind of is if you're just like going back and finding the different endings. I mean, I guess if it's your like very first playthrough through, through a visual novel, you want to keep the points invisible so that it doesn't break your immersion, I guess. But when you, once you do go back and try to like find the uh, different endings, it's kind of like, eh, I don't care about the immersion at this point, I just want to find new stuff. So just, just give me like a bar that shows like all the points that I can get with each character so I can unlock the different endings already. <laughs> uh, anyway. Let's see. Archer will continue being Archer for all eternity. Is that a sad thing or will he find salvation himself? I don't know. We'll see. You know, it's interesting actually in the anime, um, when you get this ending, this, uh, I guess you call it basically the true ending. Um, there's a bit more, you know, in the anime actually, where they actually go to the Magic Association, they meet a few characters actually, some cameos. Um, and you just learn a little bit more detail about the world. They also uh, they also like visit. Uh... Oh wait, is this not over? Wait, there's more. Oh okay. So I did. Okay, never mind. I thought there was there's that was, that was it, but actually there was more. Whoops. Kind of spoiled it right there, but yeah, there's a bit more basically where they actually go to the Magic Association. Right? What came and went were distant memories. There were signs that he forgot and cast away. Something that cannot be returned, I think? Or at least, I don't know, it looks like. It looks like we're in some sort of room, so I can only assume. Well, let's see. The sparks of the crashing swords, crashing spirits, many dozens of unskilled attacks and defenses. There are clumsy attacks that just try to deny each other. Why does such a thing revive a worn out oath? Maybe we're not, I can't. So everything's blurry, I can't tell. What's in the background? I have no idea. They were impossible attacks. His charging body is covered in wounds. His fingers are broken. His limbs are slashed apart. His breathing has stopped, although the boy does not know it. Even at a rush, his speed is trifling, and his attacks are mediocre. Although he has absorbed his combat skill, his techniques are now as clumsy as an amateur's again. His attack is executed haphazardly, but... His attack is heavier that, than any that came before. There's no superhero. The boy's mind is obliterated by the one who grew to realize that fact more than anyone. The disordered mind should collapse from the stress. It is obvious that the boy will be devoured by his contradiction. But where are the signs of his defeat? He moves his wounded body and steadies his faltering mind, but there's no hesitation in his attacks. His fury is un incomparable to before. I mean, I guess what we're seeing here is the uh, back of the castle, right? Where we were fighting Archer, I think? I don't know. His, the boy swings his sword recklessly. The attacks are equally matched. The space is filled with sparks and everything entering it will be cut to pieces. It is the embodiment of their minds that melt together even though they repel each other. The Desperate Attack there's only a dying spark that the man gives off in his last moment. The boy gasps with each attack, almost falls, steadies himself, and attacks yet again. Seeing it, he is confident that his enemy has no power left. The boy in front of him is a corpse. But why is there an infinite power in his arms holding the sword? He sees an illusion. It must be because he got bored of seeing someone attacking, even though he knows it is useless. The irritation boils up his most detestable impulse. What did he feel was beautiful and noble? The boy said that he does not want to see people die meaninglessly. He wanted to save everyone who was in trouble, if they could be saved. It is out of the, it is out of the question. He knows such a wish is just meaningless hypocrisy. 
An idea where others are more important than yourself is an ideal that should never be held. But, did he never not dream that such a life would be wonderful? He cannot hear what his enemy is saying. His enemy's voice is too weak to be heard, but his attacks are fierce. The enemy's hands are already one with the hilt. It must be to fix the sword there, but the impact will go to his body like that. The boy is covered with blood, and he will die if he retreats. For the boy, every attacks come with great pain. The voices are hard to pick up. I guess this is on the. I guess this is like from the perspective of Archer during that battle. We've been like in, in that like battle in the castle. We like switch perspectives, you know, in and out for Archer and Shiro. Um, but I guess this is just completely from Archer's perspective. There's a bit, a few, a few lines that we didn't actually see. Uh, the voices are hard to pick up. The boy who is on the verge of death frantically opposes the impediment in front of him. He does not need to be told where the boy's motivation is coming from. It is a bad dream. He's shown an old mirror image. He keeps swinging his sword with tearing arms. The only thing there is is a strained yell. There are people that cannot be saved, and there was him who cannot save them. He saw people dying meaninglessly, and he swore never to let such a thing occur again. There's only one thing that comes and goes through his mind. Things he believes in. Things he believed in. An ideal he swore never to surrender. Something he will never surrender. And so, he realizes that there will be no end to the attacks. This, this enemy will not stop. The enemy will, not, will never stop on his own. Even though the boy is attacking with all his power, he's taking no notice of him. The boy is only trying to slash himself, the one who obstructs himself. His enemy is fighting for the things he believed in, and for the things he will keep on believing in. <laughs> Realizing that, he grits his teeth. The boy keeps challenging, even though he knows he cannot win, and that it is meaningless. That is the exact mistake he made. But then why? Why do these eyes keep on staring at him? Another crashing sound. The attack is parried. The enemy cannot block any attacks. Uh, the enemy that cannot block any attacks repels the attack like nothing. The mirror breaks. He is not strong. He is not strong at all. He fights risking his life, looking ugly and miserable. But who in the world can laugh at him? He stops his breath. Pairing in the oncoming attack, the enemy readies his sword again. A final blow. Will the boy stay standing in spite of all his wounds and the strain on his mind? Of course. The boy overcame such limits ten times. It is obvious that the enemy will not stop even if this attack is blocked. The boy slashes his sword even though he's collapsing. Those eyes. They're looking straight at him. He sees a familiar dream for an instant. Whose dream was that? And who inherited that dream? The boy's voice reaches the empty mind. A single scenery closes in. What an ugly, fanatic goodwill. A beautiful ideal to struggle for. The final blow is coming in. But the man does not wash the sword that is about to pierce him. That is the only thing on the boy's mind. Even if his heart is fake, the beauty of what he believed in is real. That is something he cannot lie about. And it is the origin of his powers. The boy cries out with a smashed throat. That he wants everyone to be happy. Yes. There is no road of retreat. Because the dream is... He has made numerous mistakes. He had no way to atone for them, except for hating and killing himself. His hands are covered in blood, and is something that he can never forgive, or that can never be forgiven. But still, a straight gaze. Mistakes and lies. Shaking off everything. Running on without stopping. 
the battle ends with a victory. The pain in his chest does not lift up his conviction. As a man hates himself, salvation will never be given. But he earns a small answer. The answer is only for this summoning. It is a meaningless, meaningless thing that he will forget the next time he is summoned. But there is nothing to regret. It is something that has already been built up. Something that the boy will build using all his life. There is only one thing coming and going through his mind. There is regret. He does not know how many times he wished to redo things. The rogue spirit Emya will forever curse this end. But still... There is nothing to talk about. The boy will, re will remain, and he will leave. The only things that remain are the exchange blows. The path is long. Relying on the sounds of the swords echoing far away, the boy heads for the deserted plains. Okay, so I guess that's it. Okay, so it wasn't like I wasn't spoiling something. It was like anime exclusive that uh, Rin and Shiro they go to the Magic Association like a little bit older, and then they visit also visit like Saber's grave, you know, like actual grave um, in the real world, the King of England and whatnot and stuff. So yeah, so that's what we actually get in the visual novel. I don't know if that was shown in the anime, but like I guess a little bit of from a little bit of a, a little bit of a, I guess monologue from Archer's perspective. I mean, I guess that's what it all what all that meant was basically that Archer, even though he regretted a lot of things, and even though he wanted to kill himself, and I guess in this route, you know, to try to escape from his uh, from his reality, I guess the fact that he keeps betraying his own ideals. What he learns from that fight, basically, is that. Uh, that even though he was wrong on many accounts, even though he's been betrayed and he has betrayed his own ideals many times, they'll still live without regrets. You know? That uh, he won't deny himself his own existence and he will keep being what he is. I guess? I don't know. Something like that. Uh, but yeah. Because he probably saw that uh, even though Shiro... This Shiro in this timeline, I guess, you know, was doing exactly what he did for all that time. He still won't give up, and I guess that's the difference. Archer gave up, but his past self didn't, and he probably won't ever in the future. Or something like that. I don't know. But I guess, yeah, that was one of the endings. Let's see. Can we see that actually? Ending list? Yeah, true end. Oh, look at his happy face. So happy. Oh, and I guess, yeah, there's a... I, well, actually, there's one more end you're supposed to get for Fate. But we'll see, actually. You can't get it now. I think I know how to get it, but you can't get it until uh, until later. Um, but yeah, get one of the true ends here. Probably another ending you get. I wonder what this card is. Well, I do know there's two endings for the Unlimited Blade Works route. There's, no, there's not three endings. Anyway, we'll see, we'll see. It's probably for Heaven's Feel that uh, this opens up. Boop. Boop. And alright. Um, it's not over yet though. As I mentioned before, we still have one more ending to get. So we'll get on doing that. Mm -hmm.